It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next few minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. I'm back for this midweek edition. We'll uh, talk briefly about a budget truck that got caught in the uh, Dummerston covered bridge. We'll get the Vermont State Police report on that. We'll also talk about this weekend's leaks and lies, Vermont Yankee uh, protest. And uh, we'll get into the uh, 2014 budget. Uh, just went through the House. We'll talk to reps, Wyndham County reps, Mike Maricki and uh, Tristan Tolino. We'll do all this in 15 minutes. Press prep for the uh, live select board meeting coming up. Uh, just a matter of minutes. And uh, we'll talk about uh, a few other things, including a McDonald's at the Brooks House. Find out more uh, right here in 545 Live. I think that the building speaks for itself. It has such an incredible history of success that I think that that's really important um, to continue to build on that. My name is Stephanie Bonin and my husband and I are opening Duo Restaurant in the Brooks House. Welcome back to this April 1st, 2013 edition of 545 Live. That's footage from often BCTV contributors Mondo Media Works looking at the progression of the Brooks House renovation project, dubbed at times Brooks House Rising, or perhaps Dream to Reality. And uh, with more than a 70% lease rate required to secure financing for the Brooks House rebuild, it may have pushed uh, Masabi LLC, the investment group attempting to redevelop the Brooks House, to think outside the box when it comes to filling the downtown structure with tenants. Something that prompted a one and only I Brattleboro-ology article detailing plans for the renovations to include a high-profile McDonald's. Uh, could have almost been believed, despite uh, the 4-1 date uh, on the post, save for the article's closing sections, which uh, detail project components like an included slaughterhouse for McDonald's uh, and their, quote, factory farm to plate uh, approach and uh, Mickey D's Kids Play Palace in Harmony Parking Lot as well. Now you can find this uh, whole article online at uh, brettlebroology.com. Here it is, Brettlebroology, uh, complete with some photos here as well. Uh, take a look uh, at uh, a sketch up of things to come in Harmony Parking Lot. Again, you can find that at brittlebrewology.com. Uh, now my often co-captain here and hardworking BCTV volunteer and board member, Joseph Bushy was at the uh, Brooks House pre-lease party held at the River Garden this past month. Uh, together, uh, several presentations. You can find it all at brittlebrewtv.org. You can find a, a clip of it right now. I've been around long enough. I know him when I see him. And the Brooks House Development Group are the real deal. In addition, we spoke to Bob Stevens of Stevens & Associates and Masabi LLC groups behind uh, the Brooks House renovation about why it's so important to pack this place with tenants. Let's take a look. The Brooks House is the prime location in town. We can't have it sit there the way that it is. So part of this is an urgency that says, you've got, we've, got to, we've got to move this forward as a community. So we're really you know, looking forward to getting there and seeing those tenants in there and that place hopping. All right, uh, we'll move on here. Set against the backdrop of a Supreme Court decision to reject a New England coalition petition attempting to force the closure of Vermont Yankee, opponents of Vermont's lone nuclear reactor and its 20-year license extension reprised their leaks and lies protest this past weekend, this time spreading their words of caution around Brattleboro with a series of displays up and down Main Street uh, that culminated at the Latches Theater with an afternoon of speakers and presentations, even a few comedy skits in there. Hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez was there. The first water monster, sir, from energy, will always obey Vermont law. We'll tell you any problems only till it shut down trivia as hard as. Present at the Leaks and Lies event at the Latches to talk about the ever-elusive Certificate of Public Good, an energy nuclear must-have from Vermont's Public Service Board, if the Louisiana-based power company is indeed going to make use of the uh, Vermont Yankee Nuclear Regulatory Commission granted license extension, and its validation from Federal Judge Jay Garvin Murtha was, uh, okay, that's, that's taken my affinity for run-on sentences uh, to the limit here. The uh, Reel back a second. The la at the Latchest, talk about the ever elusive certificate of public good. Dot, dot, dot. 
was Vermont Citizens Action Network co-founder and Vermont Yankee Decommissioning Alliance member Chris Williams. To make a long story short, I believe, <coughs> and I'm handicapping, that the Public Service Board will not accept Entergy's lies. Yeah. They will not bet. They will not bet on a redemption of that corporation's behavior for the next 20 years. All right, uh, as promised, we'll talk a little bit about that budget track that crashed into the uh, covered bridge off of Dummerston's East-West Road. This is courtesy of our Vermont State Police report. Uh, just got the email in fresh from them. Uh, now, they uh, report here that a budget truck has crashed into the covered bridge on East-West Road in Dummerston. Members of the state police responded to the scene and found fresh damage and debris um, on the covered bridge. The investigation revealed that at approximately 5.15 p.m., a large budget box truck struck the east end of the covered bridge, and a witness reported seeing that truck enter the covered bridge from the east-west road side heading toward Vermont Route 30. Um, and uh, they reported that witness that the box uh, truck's cab entered the covered bridge, and the rear cargo section struck the bridge, damaging uh, both it uh, and the truck. Now, the, when the police arrived by 5.40 p.m., there, uh, was, the truck was not present, but uh, as a result of a citizen report, uh, they managed to locate the truck and contact the, uh, the driver, William R. Miller, 23, of Demerston, and uh, try and uh, issue a, a criminal citation for leaving the scene of an accident. No uh, major damage sustained to the bridge. Okay, that's uh, our Vermont State Police report on that Demerston bridge crash. All right. Uh, it may have forced a reformer headline retraction, but the story of a group of Irene-ravaged landowners in Jamaica's Water Street region denied buyouts from FEMA's Hazard Mitigation Grant Program uh, that was later revised to the story of landowners ineligible still has plenty of drama left, as last week Jamaica's select board members were handed a $220,000 tab to pick up. The 25% in matching funds needed to trigger the Fed's financial input into the $879,000 Community Development Block Grant Program project. And while affected residents remain hopeful, the Two Rivers Adikishi Regional Commission's Kevin Geiger, tasked with facilitating parts of the project, says there are more than a few obstacles that remain. We are 31 steps until closing, so it's not fast. Some of these things aren't necessarily long steps, but we check them off as we go. All right, we'll move on and uh, hopefully in just a moment via our uh, Skype webcast, head up north to the State House. Uh, first, the script. The 2014 budget bill may have passed uh, the Vermont House last week, but more than three hours of testimony before the Senate Appropriations Committee yesterday may dampen the mood of members of the Senate looking to swing the bill through with some less than Washington like decisiveness. Among the hot topics, proposed budget caps to the state's Reach Up Family Welfare Program, a measure proposed by the governor and approved by the House uh, that looks to increase the legislature's commitment to fiscal responsibility, but argue multiple committee witnesses, including Vermont State Housing Authority E.D. Richard Williams, the proposed cap could easily end up costing the state more money by forcing third-party nonprofits to pick up the slack, uh, which would in turn force some Vermonters currently relying on alternative aid to again turn to the state for help. To get the inside scoop on the budget, Wyndham District 3 Rep Tristan Tolino and District 4 Rep Mike Marwicki. Mike, of course, behind the uh, webcast remote broadcast program at Montpelier Connection, where he does interviews from the State House. Uh, I know their time is short. They've been sitting here while I've hacked through this script. Uh, so we'll launch into our fancy split screen here and see if we can do that. All right. Uh, and as I mentioned, time is short, so I'll just let you take it away. Uh, what's, what's the deal with this budget? How do you feel about it? It's certainly been controversial. We've mm -hmm. been trying to work a process here. And uh, the process does go on, though. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it, how it continues. Um, wasn't the only thing we talked about yesterday? It was not. Uh, there was a, it was a full day. I think it's hard to, to pick out. I mean, one of the natures of, of the big bill conversations is that there are so many details, and this first push to get it to the Senate is so fast uh, that you know you. I, it seems to me that you really only have substantive debate as a whole body on on a handful of items within those big bills. All right, I'll let you get back to it. Uh, Wyndham District 3 Rep Tristan Tolino joined by Wyndham District 4 Rep Mike Merwicki. Uh, 
Mike, of course, producing uh, from behind the lens of his iPad there. You can catch a brand new uh, Montpelier connection on our website at brattleboro.tv.org, which includes none other than Tristan Tolino. All right, just a few things to wrap up here uh, on this midweek edition of 545 Live, including our new on BCTV feature gives us a chance to promote uh, what we're showing on our channel and subsequently online as well. And we're going to start with uh, the community uh, author series. This includes uh, an author talk book launch reading with David Blistein uh, on his book, David's Inferno, talking about his uh, struggle with depression and his writing. It's not that I wanted to be depressed all the time. It's just that I was concerned that I'd get, well, a little vapid. Surely as a serious writer, I still needed to spend a respectable amount of time stumbling blindly in the darkness, questioning my very reason for being. And uh, the program Marijuana Resolve, hosted by Daryl Pillsbury, and uh, now joined by Joe Bushy, uh, has and made a resurgence. Obvious that there was only one single reason that Prop 19 didn't pass, and that was seniors. Robert Platshorn, uh, possibly the most notorious marijuana smuggler uh, of all time, served uh, the longest consecutive sentence for a nonviolent crime in the history of this country. He joined uh, Daryl and Joe via Skype for a special edition of Marijuana Resolve. Uh, again, not only does that uh, show this week right here on BCTV Channel 8, uh, but you can find it online as well. That's full aid. We better get, uh, get downstairs, get ready for this select board meeting here at BCTV. You should get uh, ready to watch it. Maybe uh, head to the kitchen, make yourself some toast, grab a drink, but uh, you can watch this live broadcast. Uh, if you do or don't, stay safe out there. This is always my uh, disclaimer, closing remarks. We'll be back Friday with another live broadcast, 5.45 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. Night, everybody. Some people feel they don't have a part in, or they don't understand, or they can't control, like the spotlight. Yeah. <laughs>